too. Father, I need your help. Now, God, preach your word, Lord. Only you can do that. And Lord, I ask your help this morning. God, I say what you'd have me to say. God, I present it in a way that we all can receive your word into our hearts, God, and it have the impact that you intend, Father. And we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 13 and 22. The Bible says, And he went through the cities and visited his teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know, I know ye not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drank uh, in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and your, you yourselves thrust out and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall set down in the kingdom of God and behold there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last the same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him get thee out and depart hence for Herod will kill thee Just stop there and you know, be seated I think this is probably one of the, 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 the saddest set of scripture in the Bible when you start considering the end time and the time of the end of your life and the time of the end of your waiting uh, to meet the Lord. I believe and I hope that I'm very wrong but I believe there is much more people or many more people that think they're going to that thinks they're going to heaven that aren't going to heaven. I'm so fearful uh, of the way people conduct themselves now and still consider themselves to be Christian. And 20 years ago, it was not so. Amen. It was not so. You weren't considered a Christian uh, if you've done most of the things the church allows nowadays. You weren't even considered a Christian. It, it wouldn't matter how much you bellered and hollered and screamed and said that you were. Nobody would take your word for it. Uh, and nobody would take your word for it if you didn't live the life. Amen. If your life didn't set an example uh, for the world to see uh, and the church was thought of as a place to witness and, and people were drawn uh, by the Holy Spirit to God just by being in the presence of the Word of God, of the people of God, of the man of God, and the songs of God, and the prayers to God. It was a whole atmosphere that drew uh, people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I, I mean, you didn't have to approach them. You didn't, I mean, uh, 
confrontational type soul winning was not really around but much before 30 years ago, 40 years ago, uh, in the way that they do it now. Uh, uh, and I believe and that's the only time that I do, but the methods that are used nowadays is what I'm saying weren't used back then. But I, I just want to try my best to warn you or make you aware that there is a straight gate uh, that leads into heaven. And it is very narrow. Uh, and you can't live loose and make it in. Uh, you can't swing wide and get in there. Uh, it's, a, it's a narrow uh, gate. Uh, and it takes a surrendered, concentrated life to get through that gate. Uh, and like I said, uh, just anything don't work. I mean, and God doesn't accept just anything. Uh, and the Lord, you know, He says that when they, someone, when you come to the door and start knocking, He, I mean, he just said they're going to tell you, I don't know you. Uh, and, they, and, they, and, they, and they come and they think, well, we ate in your streets and we drank with you and we done all this and done all that, and, and, but it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. Uh, and, and I want you to know that what we say, what we say doesn't change anything. The truth's the truth, and the truth is not hard to figure out when you start looking for God in somebody's life. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if you get to know them very much at all, you can determine whether you're dealing with somebody that knows God or somebody that plays like they know God. And then, I know this is in your faith preaching, but I think it better be said here in these last days uh, because it's, it's coming a time right out ahead of us that the Lord's going to call this game and He's going to say, it's over. It's over. That's it. Call the game. It's over. No more after that. No more after that. Nobody's coming in to the kingdom after that. Uh, when He has shown them uh, before, when He had preached to them, and he reminds them of that time, wait a minute, you were sitting there in Deacon Baptist Church when I had a preacher come right out and say it. You can't live like you live your life and act like or tell people or feel like even yourself that you're saved. Saved people don't <coughs> live like that. I know, and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to condemn, you know, backsliding and all, acting like it doesn't happen. Well, I will condemn it because that's your fault uh, if you let it go that far. But it does happen uh, from time to time. But that, that's not the way we're supposed to live our life. We don't live our life as a backslider. You know, we spend more time in the will of God than we do out the will of God is what I'm trying to say. And, and when it goes way unbalanced and way to the other side, we need to check up and see what we got, you know, because we ought to desire that faithful uh, balance in our lives, you know, that's created by the God that saved us and the Holy Spirit that indwells us, uh, that, that creates that inside of us. And, and really, you have to remember that uh, although it is God changing you uh, to be what He wants you to be, it's His power. He can do it. He can do it. And He will do it. And He will snatch you up if you don't come back. Quit to Him. And it's something that, like I said, that's just not said anymore because uh, that they fear, the preacher fears offending someone. Well, listen, I'd a whole lot rather offend you today than I have watched you get cast in the hell tomorrow. And I should have said something. You know, and I stand there guilty because I didn't say anything. Then shall ye begin to say, 
Haven't we eaten and drunk in thy presence? And thou hast taught in our streets? But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. It is not going to be a time uh, to try to win an argument with the Lord. Okay? The Lord knows those that are His. They hear His voice. And they come to Him. And they come to Him in their life. When their life is out of out of balance with God and sin has began to take hold and destroy their lives, they run back to the altar of God and try to get that straight because they know worse times are coming. It's not going to get better till you get right with God. Amen. And then there comes a time that God, this, this dipping in and dipping out and dipping in and dipping out, but there comes a time that God just gets fed up. Fed up. I don't know where the scripture is right now, but in one of the Corinthians, where he says, turn them over to the devil for the destruction of the flesh. I'm kind of fooling with them. Just turn them over. Uh, and of course, he, we, we know he done that uh, in, in the book of Romans, the first chapter. We see that three or four times where he turned them over, gave them over. Uh, but like I said, there, there's another place like that in, in Corinthians. He, that they, they dealt with people and dealt with people uh, trying to get them to get right in the church and they would never get right and, and then he finally just said look just just turn them over to the devil for the destruction of the flesh uh, so their soul might be saved uh, you know and, and that's all we can say with God of because, and that's the way we are as God's people he won't let that go on forever what he don't call you on it and say, okay, it's, it's it. This is it. You know, so, if you have not, I, I want you to think about your way of living. Your way of living. And if you have not faced that kind of God, yeah. if you have not faced that kind of God, you better check up on what God you're dealing with. Yeah. Because I'm talking about the God of the Bible. I'm talking about the only God there is that saves people eternally and that can make any difference in your life. Amen. And you have to remember, you have to depend on, and you, you can't fight the fight and say, well, I just can't do it. It's not for you to do. It's for Him to do. He's already done it. All you have to do is accept that you can't do it and call on him and surrender and say, Sick him, Lord. I can't do it. I can't do it. I know that's not easy to do. Until you've done it a few times, and then you become more familiar with it. When you run into things that you know that is bigger than you are, you don't have any trouble turning those things over to God before you wound up in trouble. Because if I don't turn them all over to him pretty quick, I'll wound up in trouble. And I don't fight too many of my own fights. I'm going to tell you. I pick my fights very carefully. Now, I used to not. I used to run in there like a bandy rooster and just start <laughs> feathers to flying. But I don't do that no more. I ain't got too many feathers left. <laughs> not near as many as I used to have. Though. But I learned, you know, to pick my battles. Uh, because some ain't worth fighting. And some you can't win. You know, and there ain't no need to fight one, you can't win. Uh, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I can't have you in here. You can't come in here. Are you, did you, when you came into the kingdom of God, when you professed, that the day of your salvation was at hand, the day that you were counting on, that you were safe. Do, do you remember a, a, a narrow gate? Or do you remember a wide and broad gate that you went through? And I know uh, he's not talking literally, but in the spiritual sense, you know exactly what he's talking about. And he means something that is set 
uh, set rules and set guidelines and set boundaries uh, that he expects you to live by, not just agree with, live by, change because of, not just say, well, I agree with that, but I don't do it. Well, you don't agree with it. Because if you if you don't do it, that means you don't agree with it. And you're going to fight against God. And you're not going to win. You're going to lose and lose big. You know, so when you run into things that you know are outside of His will, how do you receive direction from Him? Do you immediately catch on that the Holy Spirit is saying, Whoa! Whoa! Or is it to where you can go way on out, out there into it? And then somebody has to pull you back. Somebody here has to pull you back and, and, and convict you and, and pound on you. And, or, or is there a voice standing at that narrow gate that you came in that's speaking in your life every day? And how long do you resist the Holy Spirit? And how much calamity do you bring in your own life? And how much of the bad things that have happened in your life are things that you yourself brought in there? Outside of the will of God. Because God doesn't intend for us to live lives that way, like a roller coaster, just crazy today and, 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 and crazy tomorrow and crazy the next day and, and just crazy life. God doesn't expect His people, not only does He not expect them to live that, He doesn't expect us to let the world see us living like that. Or encounter us living like that. They ought to be able to witness about us and us not even be in the room. They ought to be able to tell a righteous story about us with well, us not even there. That's right. Right? And, and our witness goes everywhere our name goes, uh, whether we're there or not. That's the kind of life that God expects us to live. Yeah. And it's a church-centered life. Everything centers around the church and around God, around God's people and around God's work and God's word. That's where life centers at. And the children have to be taught that that's where we hang. Yeah. If, you, if you want to hang out, hang out doing God's stuff. Yeah. That's where you need to hang out at. You don't need to hang out at the pool hall. Yeah. Or, or, or whatever you do now. I don't know what you do nowadays. But <laughs> probably just stick a piece of electric wire in your mouth and sparkle all night. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, something like probably what y'all do nowadays. I'll do that and take a plug in. I won't stick it in your mouth and watch sparkle when I do it. Amen. So I'm not doing that. I got out of it before they started doing that. But you know, you know when you find yourself in those places and you are a child of God, you know immediately that you don't belong there. And you don't have to give up your morals uh, to, to have friends. You know? Because people like that aren't your friends that will drag you in to something like that. Especially if you have shown them that you are a Christian. And you are trying to live the Christian life. Listen to me. Anybody that, that says they are your friend and won't help you, Live the Christian life, get away from them. Amen. Not your friend. If all they're going to do is put you down about it uh, and try to make you feel bad about it, that's not your friend. That's not your friend. Because I'm telling you right now, your friend, your friend cares about you. And if he cares about you, the safest place he can get you is to the feet of Jesus. And help you stay there. Right? And not try to drag you away from that. Not try to point out everything that's wrong with the church so you'll quit. Right? right? Because there's enough to quit on. You can pick any three rows in here and you can pick enough out of just any three rows in here live to quit on God. Uh, now it doesn't matter which three rows. I can pick three off this side. Three off that. I wouldn't have to pick two off this side. Three off this side. <laughs> and, 
and show <laughs> what I'm talking about. Amen. You see? You, you just take this out, this out and, and there's enough there to get you to quit church if you want to quit church. You know, there's enough at every church you go to if you don't really want to go to church for you to have a good excuse to get up and go home. Amen. And it won't take you but just a few minutes to find it. Amen. 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 If you didn't want to come, if you didn't want to come anyway, you, you'll find a problem just like that. That's right. you just, and if you know, we got some here. We got a couple here. <laughs> couple. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> because we are expected by God to live on that narrow road. If you find the road of your life is very broad, that's not that's not a life lived for God. The life lived for God is a narrow road. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. And you think you say, well, kids wouldn't like that because they don't like rules. That's wrong. That's a lie of the devil. That's, right. that's a lie of the devil. The kids like rules. Kids, y'all say amen. You kids, say amen. Have you got that kind of thing? You shoot it amongst that bunch over here. You get an amen out of it. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Barriers and guidelines means that your mom and your dad love you. And they don't want you to get in what's on the outside of that boundary. And you can you can do you can live safely inside of that boundary. You can have a great time and a great life. Just don't go outside that boundary. And they try to stretch them as far as they can, but they have to keep you away from what will hurt you. And I'm telling you, I, I was a child one time, been a while. But I was a child one time, and I'm telling you right now, I would have loved to have had some boundaries around my life so I could have hid in them uh, sometimes, and I could have hid from some of the trouble that I, that I found myself in because I didn't have no boundaries in my later teen years, you know. So, but I would have I given anything uh, if I had if thought somebody cared enough about me to give me some boundaries, to give me a safe place to live. Uh, you know, uh, where I didn't have to worry all the time about getting in trouble. So I just want you to, to think about, and I'm fixing the clothes, I want you to think about what road. Forget all the other things in your life that are right now. And I know there's a million things you think about. But forget all the things in your life that you're thinking about right now. And look at me, listen to me. Think about your life from this perspective alone, what kind of road do I live my life on? Is it a godly road? Is it a, is it a road that God would be pleased with? <clears throat> or do I play on that broad and wide and dangerous, and the Bible says a road of destruction, is that where I live? And then Sunday I run through that little narrow gate and go play church for a couple hours and then go back and hit that broad road again? That's dangerous. Amen. And I love you too much to not tell you. Please don't do that. Please don't keep running to that broad road because it won't be long you're going to get caught on that broad road and you're going to get hurt really, really bad. And God doesn't want you to. And I don't want you to. And your real friends don't want you to. So try to get back on that narrow road. Think about it. Close it with that. Y'all come on, come on. What road? Which road do you see yourself on? The narrow? The broad? Where do you want to be? Where do you want to be? If you're not where you want to be, why don't you come to the Lord this morning? Talk to Him about that. If you're not saved, 
You're on that broad road that leads to destruction. And there's nothing but destruction there. And hell is hot and ready to receive you. If you are a child of God and you find yourself half strayed on to that broad road and want to come back, come back this morning. Come back to that straight man. You do as God leads you. You do as God leads you. Let's stand. Father, as we close, God, I just ask you, Lord, to deal with each heart in the room. Lord, they know what they need, and God has been preached plain enough this morning. The Lord, we all know where we stand with you. God, give us strength and courage in us. For it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about why we go to the altar. None of their business, Lord. God, give us strength this morning to come and make those things right with you. Leave out of here. Plan on living at that straight gate, that narrow way, that safe place to live. Lord, and we'll praise you for it. God, if they want among you that don't know Christ as Savior, help them this morning, Lord. Help them see Jesus. Help them come to Jesus this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.